Just stay solid rocky and I just jumped off the porch with dirty glove best. I ain't going out like that. I'm told not partner, no, I ain't feeling nothing. I'm an LA eating lobster with my little baby and time out. Alright, today we got Stay Solid Rocky jumping off the porch with us today. Yo, what's happening with you, my dog? What's going on, gang? I'm alright, I'm alright, just calling. For sure. How you feeling today? I'm alright, I'm motivated, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to go to um, fly to New York right after this, actually. I gotta fly to New York. I got a little freestyle to do, go do, and now I'ma shoot right back to the A. That's all. Right. You know what I'm saying? Trying to lock in the studio. I'm trying to fall back in love with music for real, for real. So. That's hard. And yeah. you done moved out here to the A now, ain't it? Hell uh, yeah, I moved out here with my old lady. So we just be trying to meet good people, be active, man. You know what I'm saying? We be, I be doing like old man shit, like taking my dogs on walks and shit. Yeah. You ain't gonna really catch me in the club too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your transition to the city? I can say different, because like I said earlier, um, I didn't really know I was coming to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I moved here without a plan, so man, it been times where I'll be in one Airbnb, we'll move to the next one. They'll find out I got dogs, and they'll try to tell me I got to get out, and now I got to find somewhere else to go in, in the next day type shit. So it's just a lot of packing, unpacking, moving around, but I'm trying to find a house out here. For sure. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of dogs, a lot of pets. I fuck with the XL bullies, man. Yeah. I don't like, I don't got nothing against the Frenchies, but me, bro, if I want a dog, I want some, a nigga running my house is gonna, gonna do what it's supposed to do, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> One that's gonna goddamn protect. Okay, I feel you, right. So now that you out here in the A, how would you say it compares back home to San Antonio or out there in Richmond, Virginia? <coughs> so San Antonio, <coughs> I moved out of San Antonio when I was like 12. So I say that's usually like around the time you start really understanding your environment, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't really get to dive too deep into the San Antonio scene. I had moved uh, from San Antonio. I lived in a little, little ass city in Texas, San Angelo. Seventh grade, I moved to South Carolina. I stayed out there for like three years. Then I eventually moved to Richmond when I was like 15. So I could really say the last five years of Richmond, man, that shit was crazy. I didn't, Bro, it was so much people supposed to blow up before me, bro, nigga. Get like 50 years in jail, nigga got down. Get locked up and snitch. Some niggas done passed away. Some people just didn't take advantage of the opportunities, you know what I'm saying? So for me to be in this position, it's like, it's a real big thing in my city. Yeah, that's real. So how would you explain your childhood coming up? Because you don't bounce around from city to city? I would say I'm, I was more confused as a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, just trying to understand life. I, I spent a lot of time by myself just thinking, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like what kept me out of a lot of trouble is I ain't never really been around people long enough to click in and get into what they doing, or, you know what I'm saying? I was always more on my own, own wave, you know what I'm saying? But I would say it was more confusing. Then as I started to get older, I started realizing, like, we weren't really as living as comfortably as everybody else type shit probably around like the age, like 12 to 14, that's when my eyes started opening up and shit. Um, just moving around houses, goddamn, I didn't live in the hotels before. This, man, everything, so I would just say there's a lot of confusion. For sure. So because you migrated around a lot, would you say it was harder or easier to identify with yourself? I would say it was easier. Because a lot of people, not saying I'm a follower, but like, boom, for, for example, let's say all your friends smoke black and miles and you don't like black and miles. But eventually, boom, you might hit it a couple times. Next thing you know, you smoke blacks. You know what I'm saying? So it's easy just to adapt to your environment. I wasn't really in no environment that, that long to really fully adapt, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna come out here and say, yeah, I'm from the hood, or I ain't gonna come out and say, I'm from this place, I'm from Richmond, I'm from here, because I done lived all different type of places. I done lived in the hood, middle class, upper class. I done been around all type of walks of life. I done, you know what I'm saying? I done really seen it all, so. I don't really, I mean, I could say that it really helped me learn myself rather than following a crowd or, you know what I'm saying, living a certain lifestyle to fit the crowd that I'm in. Straight like that. So what would you say is the biggest life lesson you learned growing up? that you're not gonna really understand what your parents are going through until you get older. 
that's what I've really been thinking about. Like my mom, single parent, four kids, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of stuff like boom. I remember one day we was walking back from the store, a bunch of groceries, like I said, four kids, my mom. And some, I was just talking about this the other day. Somebody stopped in the van, just pulled over, ch- talked to my mom for a little bit. We got in the car and they gave us a ride home. We, don't, we lived around the corner, but it was hot as fucking Texas. You know what I'm saying? You know how that is. So when we get in the van, my mom just started crying. And I remember I asked her why she crying and all she was like, was God good. But I didn't really understand that. Now that I'm thinking back at shit like that, it's like, damn. My mom was 24, yeah, damn, 25, no car, no nothing, four kids walking in the heat, all us carrying groceries. But my mom used to rap. So she used to like make little songs and shit to just try to keep us motivated, keep walking. Like Rocky, keep walking, man. You know what I'm saying? But just try to make shit fun. But now that I'm older, I think back on that shit like, damn, that shit crazy. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So would you say some of your love for music comes from your family, your mother, and your father? I can say my love for music probably, because I've been rapping my whole life. It probably stemmed from like Lil Wayne and just seeing the lifestyle and like my mom, my mom, she um, just seeing different niggas around the neighborhood too. I'm from Texas. This one niggas had the Cadillacs on the goddamn 28s and goddamn pull up the Eminem cars, yeah. goddamn, but I just seen all the PlayStation in the cars. You know what I'm saying? So I just always liked the money. It just I was always just watching niggas get money. So I knew when I get older, I ain't never wanted to work in a normal job or work at a desk. I always wanted the money, a different lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So when would you say you started making music? I always been freestyling. I probably write every now and then, but when I started actually consistently and like taking it serious, when I was like 14, I got a video on YouTube when I was 14. I was like, um, this is Rock Figaro, that's my real name. Before fame, da da da, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck, just, and that was when I was 14, before any party girl, any, you know what I'm saying? Any of that shit. That's real. So what motivated you to start making music yourself? Shit. I probably was bored. I don't know, bro. I don't, bro. I've been doing this shit as long as I can remember, bro. So I can't really tell you, bro. I just know that that's <coughs> what I do. You know what I'm saying? I just always had a passion. Like I said, I feel like at first it probably started off on some shit like I could rap. Probably just freestyle as a kid. Then really just my thoughts getting deeper and deeper. Now it's turned to a way I could really speak about what's on my mind. And, bro, I could really make any type of song that I want. I just listen to music different. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I've been doing this. I've been paying attention to music ever since I was little. Yeah. I know early you said you were inspired by Lil Wayne, but I also know you were influenced by the likes of Bone Thugs and Harmony, Kodak Black, you know, a lot of melodic artists. <coughs> yeah, my mom used to love Bone Thugs. <coughs> used to listen to No Surrender, Mo Murder, um, <coughs> like shit like that, goddamn. Like, she liked Bone Thugs, Lauryn Hill, Wyclef John. She liked them people. That's hard. Yeah. So what would you say about the likes of those artists like draw, drew you to them? Like, what was, what was appealing about them, would you say? Bone Dugs, I don't know. Because when I listen to a lot of old music, they weren't really rapping fast. Yeah. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I, don't, I ain't never really, I tuned in to Tupac a couple times, but I don't really listen to a whole bunch of Tupac. I don't really know Tupac like that. I like kind of Biggie more, because just, I don't know, I like, I like more what he talking about. I was fucking with Biggie when I used to listen to um, when I used to listen to them. But nobody's really rapping fast and singing and doing it like how Bone Thugs was doing when I listened back to older people. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be missing out on some people, but from what I heard, Bone Thugs just stood out to me. Yeah. I was fucking with Busy Bone too, because his voice was a little bit different, like a little higher, but fast. He just know how to play with his voice. Yeah. So when would you say you decided to take music serious? 14. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How would you say you got your rap name? Cause my Instagram got deleted. So then I need to think of a new Instagram name. At first I was just going to rap by my real name, The Rock. But my Instagram got deleted cause my Instagram was duh.rock, like D-U-H, like the pronunciation. And then that shit got deleted. I need to think of a new one. My mama always called me Rocky cause my real name. So then I was like, shit, stay solid Rocky. Hell That's yeah. hard. I don't know how the fuck I came up with that shit, but And yeah. it just stuck. Yeah. For sure. It's just like the meaning behind it, kind of, I guess. So, did you know that Party Girl would change your life? Fuck no. 
Nah. Hell yeah, no. Nah. Not even with the slightest clue. But I was not gonna drop that song. Swear. All right, so. <coughs> my brother who rapped his name Keezy. His Instagram real dot Keezy. Um, I show him all my songs and shit. We, we vibe off each other. Our flow's kind of similar sometimes because we just used to rapping, each other, rapping with each other throughout the years and shit. So, you know what I'm saying? I showed him Party Girl. He was like, he don't fuck with it. I was like, you tripping. So I went to go record with it. I mean, I went to go record it. And he ended up liking the shit and I ended up not really fucking with it. But then I posted a little snippet on Instagram a couple times. Because originally I posted a video of me just singing the song in my car. So when I recorded it, I posted a snippet a couple times and they weren't fucking with it. But before they was like begging for it type shit. So then I finally lastly posted the snippet. That shit just went up. So after that, I just knew like, yeah, I got to drop this song. Yeah. So then once you released it, what was the reaction to everybody, all the listeners, all your peers? You talking about when it actually started going up? Yeah, when it came out, like you put it out and it started going up. Um, niggas was just keeping up with the stats, telling me the stats. Oh uh, yeah, bro, your shit just hit 50K, your shit just hit 100K, your shit just da da da, you know what I'm saying? Um, I could say some people more started believing in me. Um, like when I actually, put my dad on the phone with my manager and shit. Um, he actually more saw the vision. Like, he didn't really understand the music shit at first. He didn't really believe in it. So, he just ain't really like the lifestyle that came with it too. You know what I'm saying? But that's always, that's always what I was into. You know what I'm saying? But once he actually talked to my manager, saw the shit was like official and like seen the paperwork and shit like that, then I could say he more started like trusting the process type shit. Where would you say you were mentally at the time of this release? Like once this shit started rising the fan, like where would you say you was at mentally? Oh, I like this question. Uh, I was in a dark place. I was in a real dark place. And um, <coughs> my best friend went to prison. <coughs> um, my life was just changing, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really trust a lot of people around me. I was, I was freshly getting out of a bad relationship. Um, I, had, I was losing a lot of money, jobs and everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right before all this shit kicked off, even, all right, so right before it kicked off, I, that's when I was losing my jobs, got out the relationship and everything, da da da. Then I was chilling for a little bit, then Goddamn, that's when all my friends started getting locked up and shit. And that's when I say I was signing. So like, as I was signing and everybody telling me you a superstar, you, your song is going up fast, you number one on SoundCloud, number da 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 on TikTok. And the whole time I got friends going to jail, I got mental health that I'm dealing with, you know what I'm saying? Just think about all the shit surrounding me. And, you know what I'm saying? Just wondering who can I trust, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. My mind was pretty much everywhere as this shit was going up. I won't really think, and I could also say I was bigger than I could even imagine. You know what I'm saying? I never, I didn't really think of myself as nothing special or no superstar or, oh shit, I got Uzi on the song. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really, that didn't really hit me. It probably still haven't hit me yet. Yeah. What was your reaction once Uzi reached out to get on the song? He didn't even reach out. It was more of my manager. He had the track, and he was like, I got to show you something. I was at his house. And then, boom, went to the studio, played the song. <coughs> and I listened to the voice. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, oh, shit, that's crazy. But I bet. I fuck with it. Like, sometimes when big artists get on songs, they don't really try to do their thing for real. You know what I'm saying? They don't try to turn up on it or really show their style. I feel like he did exactly what he was supposed to do in that song. You know what I'm saying? So that shit was hard. That's crazy. Shout out to Uzi, man. Yeah, I fuck with Uzi. What's y'all relationship like today? Um, I ain't spoke to him in a minute, but shit, I done been on the phone with him before and shit, chopped it up with him. We don't really got the craziest relationship. That's real. Yeah, but I fuck with him. He a cool dude. That motherfucker two times platinum now, ain't it? About three probably now. It's three now. Yeah, yeah I was gonna yeah. say about three now. That's my first music video too. Word. The first time I ever stepped in front of the camera. Just the first hit you ever made, which is like, this is the first everything. Mm-hmm. 
So you just really went on faith. Like, so what would you say to an artist that's out there struggling, trying to find their voice or their sound, their creative vision? That's just, you know what you I'm saying? You just gotta rap. You gotta rap on different beats. Different type of beats, just test yourself out. You know what I'm saying? Just fly, find your flow, freestyle, whatever you do. You know what I'm saying? I like to write, but <coughs> before I write, I freestyle on the beat. <coughs> find a little melody. <coughs> right from there. <coughs> How much has life changed for you since the release of Party Girl? <coughs> a hundred. Hundred fifty percent, man. Like I said, bro, after Party Girl, I, my friends started going to jail. I started traveling. I went to California. I ain't never been no damn California. So I go to New York more. I started taking road trips. Goddamn, Corona hit. That affected my career a lot. Uh, Cause I was blowing up through the pandemic when we was on quarantine and everything. So it was, it was a lot of Zoom calls. I was meeting people on the phone, conferences. I'd be. But then, like, my management would get mad and shit type shit because I'd be always in the car with my niggas or on the road doing something, just calling. Because ain't really music. It ain't a lot of music-related things to do in Richmond, so I'd just be living like a normal person. You know yeah. what I'm saying? whole time I got a song going platinum. Yeah. But when I get on these Zoom calls, I'll always be on the move in the car doing something, never really at home or really focused as I should. The whole time I got this huge opportunity in front of me. For sure. Do you ever feel any pressure to follow up to the success of that single? Yeah, at first I did. I used to, I used to do as like wake up in the middle of the night and think like, hell no, I can't be no one hit one day. I can't go outside. I can't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then really it's like, with this music shit, at the end of the day, I love this shit. This is what I do. Like I said, I've been doing this my whole life. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to change my music or try to force my sound just to apply to the hit, you know what I'm saying, just to relate to the hit for a crowd. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make my type of music, and then my actual crowd, my actual fan base, my following is going to find me. <coughs> what would you say is the biggest sacrifice that you had to make now that you're successful? <coughs> the biggest one? It's a lot of sacrifices, like, for example, once you're in a position of power, you got to watch what you say more. Because you could just be saying some shit like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this on some, you know what I'm saying? Just conversating, oh, yeah, shit, this summer, let's go goddamn, take the vacation, you know what I'm saying? You could say some shit like that. And next thing you know, summer come, you might have some shit of stuff on your schedule. But you, you know what I'm saying? They're going to, you in a position of power, so they're going to take your word more serious. So they're going to be waiting on that. And if you don't, you know what I'm saying, bring that vacation, then they might be disappointed. Straight I'm just up. using that as an example, but that yeah. just apply to anything. You That's know what I'm saying? You just, you just more, you gotta watch what you say, watch what you do, and just watch the energy you bring around yourself. Straight up. Now, would you say that's because of your upbringing with your parents' religion and all? I don't know, cause, all right, so my dad from Puerto Rico. My grandma, uh, she do something called Santeria. That's like, I don't really know how to explain it, but I mean, it's, people gonna know who, what it is. But I feel like that might have something to do, like she might have manifested some, a lot, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I can't say I'm real religious as far as I have a religion, but I am like real spiritual. I'm just not one of those people that's gonna always broadcast it and like try to put it on other people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's more within, I mean, it's for me. Yeah. So, I don't know, I, I have always been a little spiritual since I was younger, so I feel like that might have something to do with it. That's hard. What yeah. advice would you give to somebody whose manifestations ain't landed yet or they don't see the fruitations of it? Man, I have a song with 130 million views. I'm a normal person. I ain't never thought that was gonna happen. I'm, bro, I'm sitting on this porch, like I'm in front of you right now. I never thought this would happen. You know what I'm saying? Well. I thought it would happen not this fast. I'm only 21. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to go with the motion. Don't try to force it. Make strategic moves. Move smart. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you're going to fuck up a couple times, but that's just part of life. You just got to make adjustments. You know what I'm saying? But just chase your dream, bro. Whatever you're doing, make sure that you still chase your dream while you're doing it. Straight up. So who are some of the artists you are looking at right now that's on the rise that you got your eyes on? Like, okay, real hard, 
bro hard, she hard, she hard, you know what I mean? Mm. Let me see. I don't really be like in tune a lot, I ain't gonna lie. Like a lot of the female artists and a lot of different rappers, I mix them up, I ain't gonna lie. Cause I just don't be in the mix a lot, but I know um, Shorty Shorty, I fuck with his flow, his shit hard. Um, let me see. Kodak, ever since he got out, he been dropping crazy ass songs, I feel like. I'm always fuck with Kevin Gates, you know what I'm saying? I was listening to more Kevin Gates when everybody else was like listening to Chief mm -hmm. Keef and like, you know what I'm saying? I was more into like the Kevin Gates type music. Um, I don't really know though. See my nigga Keezy, the one I was, the one I was just talking about, you know? My nigga Beezy, he make hard music. He, man, it's a lot, it's a couple niggas I fuck with, but. I don't want to. I don't want to start naming a bunch of people and leave some people out. Yeah, you know I feel that. I feel. I already know how it goes. So talk to us about your new single, Lucky. Shit, that's my shit. You know what I'm saying? I made that song maybe in December of last year. Um, <clears throat> that was also cool shit. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just had the idea of just me painting in the video. I don't know why, but it was it was about to, it was supposed to go a little bit different, but I fuck with how it came out, you know what I'm saying? But I was just more talking about my life on that song. Like, That's true. I got a little bit more personal. Yeah. So what can listeners expect from your upcoming project? Different flows, turn songs. <coughs> <coughs> I know a lot of times they <coughs> people be saying I be dropping. People say I be dropping slow songs now, so I'm gonna speed it back up for y'all. Speed it back up, them folks. You know what I'm saying? But I might throw a couple slow vibes in there too. Yeah. I feel like the slow songs, those be the classics. Them do be some of the hard ones. I feel yeah, like, too. like the songs you could go back in 15 years, 20 years, you could show your kids. You yeah. know what I'm saying? This what the vibes was in my day. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. That's what it's all about. So talk to us about your label situation. So I was with Columbia. Um, that's who I signed to when Party Girl was going up. I was rocking with them for a little bit. Some things started changing in their office. So everything just kind of started getting mixed up. Um, I was trying to move at a faster pace as far as dropping my music and putting out content and shit. Um, but I mean, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Things happen, so shit. I still fuck with them. You know, yeah. it's, it's always love for Columbia, but I just, I'm independent now, so now I'm just focusing on getting more content out on, by myself, you know what I'm saying? And I might resign, we're gonna see about it, but we're gonna see. That's real. Talk to us about your grind as an independent artist now then. You gotta be more on your shit, like, you gotta make shit shake for yourself because you don't got, I mean, yeah, I got my management and stuff, but they got other artists they got to focus on too. So you as an artist, you got to bring stuff to the table. And this is what I'm learning also. I didn't really notice at first. When I was first blew up, I thought that everything was just going to be handed to me. Yeah, I don't really got to do too much, just write my music. But now, now I'm noticing you got to bring stuff to the table. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to contact people. You got to set up. Like, I set up this interview, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stuff like that. That's real. So would you ever consider signing to another major label situation? Yeah. I mean, like I said, it wasn't really horrible. I ain't have no bad experience with Columbia, for real. It was just, we weren't, I feel like we weren't seeing the same vision. Yeah. So that's why I chose the independent route. I feel that. So what else are you working on right now? Um, I'm trying to get my EP together, maybe drop a mixtape, maybe around New Year's. Um, like I said, man, I'm just in Atlanta just trying to meet people, just trying to connect with everybody. So, I mean, anybody feel free to hit me up on Instagram, Stay Solid Rocky, Twitter, Stay Solid Rocky. You know what I'm saying? Just just trying to get shit in motion. Straight like that. <coughs> Any last words and shout outs? Um, shout out to y'all for having me, man. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all cool peoples. For sure. Um, 
shit. No, not really, man. Just shout out the city. You already know how that go, but. Game, man. Shout out my boy Stateside of Rocky, man. I appreciate y'all. No cap. I ain't going out like Brock, I'm told not partner, no, I ain't feeling that. I'm in LA eating lobster with my little baby and talking about similar. Came a long way.